Okay, so today we're gonna to be tearing down the Digimon Vital Bracelet. Now, originally I intended on not using my personal bracelet, but another one that I had ordered, but in my impatience, I actually went ahead and broke down everything here. So there's a few things that I won't actually be doing, but I'll be kind of talking through because it's like a one-time deal. So um, yeah, let's just kind of go into it. Really, the only thing you need is a Phillips head screwdriver, and that's about it. The teardown itself was pretty self-explanatory, and I'm gonna be showing you guys all of the individual parts inside. And yeah, let's just kind of begin. So um, it's recommended that obviously when you start that you turn this off. Is mine off? Yeah, it's off, okay. So turn this guy off, and you wanna go ahead and remove the Doom card tray. And then I actually wanna talk about these later, so if you're wondering, but anyways, um, you can also remove this little flap that will kind of come naturally and then there are these two screws here I'm gonna go ahead and Remove those on both sides. It's worth noting that these bands actually are not Interchangeable they are interchangeable, but you can't swap the uh, top from bottom and bottom to top So there is actually a correct top side and a correct bottom side. So uh, Let's Go ahead and move these out of the way and then you do kind of want to be careful to not pull too hard because you will scuff this if that's important to you i've kind of done this enough and i don't really care <laughs> anyways onto the back there are actually four screws here and these are actually different sizes um, all the screws that i'm talking about are uh, unique sizes so you do kind of want to keep track of them but they're easy enough to note and yeah there's cheap plastic all around so you can hear squeaking. All right, now once you've got that, like this four over there, this can actually pry open. Now when you pull this open, you actually wanna be careful because on the side with the buttons here, this little flap does get in the way a little bit when pulling this apart and also, there is a series, there's our series of ribbon cables uh, associated. Now, thankfully, oh yeah, and the screen. You can see the screen coming out here. Um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But thankfully, this piece here, and you can see I have a screen protector, actually just comes off entirely on its own. This really cheap plastic here houses uh, both of the buttons and then the rubber plate for the micro USB slot is actually stuck in there pretty good. Um, this piece here gets really dusty really quick and cleaning it is not so fun. So usually when I put it away, I tend to try to place this back like so. And then you can actually see in here that they go like that. But I try to keep this facing upwards like that so dust doesn't come in and you don't have to take this apart to clean the inside. So that's just a little bit nicer. And then onto the main board itself, um, the screen, uh, actually has these little pegs inside here that you can see so there's like a couple pegs top and bottom and they actually neatly house themselves right in there and then this up top is actually the NFC tag so you can see those little ridges over here and that actually is what triggers the NFC battles so this part uh, the screen is actually soldered on. There is a ribbon cable on the other side, which we'll talk about. But before we go any further, there are these two screws up here that we need to remove. So let's go ahead and do that. Those are different sizes as well. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. And thankfully, if you get the right screwdriver, you can actually just use the same one for everything. And these are bigger than the ones, the four that we initially took out for the main body. But again, you can kind of just tell them apart by looking at them. So once that's off, sorry about the screwdriver, you are able to pry this. Now you want to do it slowly. And this is the part where I kind of went ahead of you guys. But right here, you'll see that the heart rate sensor and the sound driver are actually attached on via a couple of cables. Uh, also, this plastic piece here for the power button, it just kind of pops off, so just be wary of that. Um, what I'm going to do, I want to talk about these two real quick because um, they tend to get in the way. So, first one, where's my camera? There we go. First one right here is the heart rate sensor. 
Now the heart rate sensor is glued in um, with these two little pegs and these pegs are actually melted with, I'm assuming the soldering iron and you have to pry it open. To pry it open, you're probably gonna pop off these little bits of melted plastic and that's actually what these are down over here. You can see the, the little bits of plastic. I actually just took a little pry tool and if you don't have a pry tool, you could probably get away like I used one of these guys here. You can get like an iFixit kit um, or like a guitar pick or something. But if you can't use that, you can use a flathead screwdriver, but you do need to be careful to not actually damage this. And you can actually maybe tell here that I've scuffed the sides a little bit and actually made a scratch on the board. It still works fine. Uh, double check my heart rate. Everything works totally normal. <laughs> Pardon the cat. Um, and then over here is the sound driver. <laughs> Talk about sound. Um, the sound driver over here is actually, again, melted, and I'm gonna use a pry tool to show you guys. But over here, you'll notice that there's probably a lot of like gunk and material, and you can see that I scraped some off. You can just scrape it off again if you have a plastic pry tool that helps a ton. But they melted the plastic here and then basically use it to glue in the sound driver together. Now to pry this open, you kind of have to scrape away at all of the gunk, and then from there, find a good point to kind of uh, kind of leverage yourself under and then pop out. For me, that I couldn't really get it without pulling this wire. So I pulled the wire and I created like a little opening. And then when I did that, I used this little pry tool and then popped it out. Unfortunately, when doing that, and honestly, it's really hard not to do this, I actually destroyed one of these solder connections here. And this is actually my soldering job. That's kind of just a glob of solder. It's a very easy fix if you know how to solder. Even if you don't really know how to solder, it's still pretty easy to fix. But keep in mind, this is probably the easiest thing to break. So if you actually do like having sound, uh, be careful. I don't like having sound, but even so, I was able to fix it pretty simply. So after you pop these out, they kind of just come out like that. And this is the remainder of the back housing. The back housing, nothing really noteworthy except for over here, there are these two little pegs in which the... Um, the heart rate sensor gets connected to, and then on the back you can see here there's that little bit of plastic for the heart rate sensor. Now onto this guy. Uh, so sound driver, this is the heart rate sensor and it'll flash green whenever the device is turned on. This is the sound driver, nothing crazy here. The battery is actually glued on. So right here, we'll now this actually does take a little more force. I've taken this apart several times because some of you guys may know that I'm working on a separate project. But over here, I wanna show you guys the dim holder right there. It often gets in the way. This is actually another piece of plastic that you can just pry out with your hand. Or if it's, it tends to get stuck to the glue. Yeah, like that. So this is actually just a little plastic tray to kind of assist with the loading of a dim card. We'll put that aside. The battery comes out and then the battery is actually soldered directly onto these two wires or with these two red not red wires these two wires over here if you flip it over to the back you'll notice let's get the screen off that these two spots right here the ones that are uh, basically more more vibrant <laughs> those are the two pins that correspond to the battery and if you wanted to if you remove this little shielding right here that this protects itself uh, the battery from the heart rate sensor I'm assuming it's like an electromagnetic shield. Um, if you remove this, and be very careful because you don't want to bend a battery ever. But if you look here, you can see that this is a 3.7 volt, 160 milliamp hour battery. These are pretty easy to replace. If you ever wanted to, you just have to do a little bit of soldering. It's not the easiest drop in the world, but it's definitely doable. You can do it in probably like a good five to 20, five to 20 minutes based on your skill level. So it's doable, it's not the best. Um, and then over here, you can see that we've got everything else, the power switch, the two buttons, micro USB. Uh, this looks like a glorified SD card slot, funny enough. And then the ribbon cable for the screen, even though there is a little detachable, uh, little clasp over here. If you look on the other side, right here on this black cable, it's still soldered in. So it's not impossible to swap the screen out, but it's definitely not gonna be enjoyable. Same thing kind of goes for the heart rate sensor. And I think with that, that's probably everything. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take photos of everything so people can see the parts individually but, um, and like the main board and everything kind of torn down, but that's, that's it. It's a pretty easy 
um, process. If you wanted to put everything back, this guy just kind of folds back on top of itself like so. Before you put the battery back into place, you do want to get the dim card little tray over here. And you want to put the tray back like so. And it just kind of it casually rests on top. It kind of feels right. And then once you do that, you will get the battery. And then one note about the battery is that when you're putting this back on, make sure that the dim tray is back in. The wires, I like to tuck just under the power switch like this. It's a little hard to do this with the camera, so I apologize. And you kind of just want to get it close to flush with the rest of the device. And you can kind of see, actually, while I'm looking at this, I had a conversation about this with people in the uh, Digitama Hatchery Discord. Um, but one of the reasons why the vinyl bracelet is so thick is because Bandai opted to layer everything on top of each other. So if you notice, which is the design and, you know, of course the heart rate sensor and the sound drivers are going to be down below. This is just a big sandwich. So you've got these two drivers, you've got the battery, the main board, the screen with the NFC tag, and then it's cased in plastic. Funny enough though, if you look at the plastic, I'm going to take that out for a second. If you look at the plastic here, it's actually not that much thicker. So a lot of people have been talking about replacing just the shell to make it thicker, but in reality, that's not really going to fix the problem. Now, again, for people that are coming from Discord, you know my solution, and maybe there'll be a YouTube video on that one day, but until then, really, the only use for replacing this is gonna be to, you know, change the screen out because you've got a bunch of scratches, but if that's the case, maybe just get a screen protector and call it a day. Uh, anyways, uh, that's gonna be everything. You just layer everything back, and then once that's all there, this guy, We'll come back and then you will. Oh, this is upside down. Sound driver goes in, the heart rate sensor goes into its little slot here, and this one has little pegs that you should be able to tell, like that. That is in, and then the sound driver goes back into its place. And I'm gonna quit hastily do this because I'm gonna take it apart for photos anyway. But once that's all in, you'll screw these two pieces back in, place the cap back on screw the four more pieces in, and you're done. So, that's it. That's the vinyl bracelet in a nutshell. It's pretty self-explanatory. One final tip. Oh, I didn't even mention. Uh, two more tips. Before you put everything back together, get your little power switch that fell way over there to the side, and then make sure that this goes back into place, like so. Right, you definitely want that before you go, but in my case, before you reassemble everything, hit the power switch, make sure that your screen is on, everything works, and that your brightness is way too high, even though it's set to one. <laughs> but, you know, make sure everything works, test the buttons out, make sure the sound works, if you're into sound. I turned my sound on just for this demo, and you can see a sleeping Pyildramon, but everything looks to be A-OK, -okay, so we're all good here, we're safe to reassemble. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Uh, if you're curious on the project I have to kind of revitalize the vinyl bracelet, then, uh, you know, keep it locked there too. But otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Peace.